Welcome back to another episode of a very basic space program. Last time we went to Mercury, we're going to talk about what we got out of that flight. And uh, this time uh, we're going to go to Mars and then we're going to do some planning for potentially a Jupiter mission. So um, please join me. Welcome back. And you can see, actually, if you look at the bottom right hand corner down here, it keeps flicking on and off because our, our Discovery 5 craft that went past Mercury in the last episode it's, uh, it's trying to transmit all of its data. I've actually gone forward by, I think probably about 10 days just to give it a chance to get most of it out. So it's got most of the data out and now it's just got the experiments that it's currently running into planetary space. So I think there's three or four of them that are long sort of 30 day experiments. It's currently doing that. And you can see anyway, if it pops up, we've got about 156 science come back off that probe alone, which has taken us to about 206, uh, 205, which gives us some more points so we can go to our r d and i'm actually gonna just pump eight of them into the r d just get that loaded up there so what we're actually doing at the moment is we're researching that hydrolox which is going to take 27 days um we've got some r d to spend so i'm actually going to uh, first of all i definitely want that i also want that and that um oh this is choices um we're gonna take you know what i want to get this first stage sorted out so we're gonna do that then we're going to upgrade our Hydrolox components because I quite like the idea of this. I don't know why, I just like the idea. Um, potentially we could go J2. Hold on a second, is that... That's LR87 LH2 and that's LR8, LR87 LH2. What's the difference? Why is that one there? Are these different... That's RO Engines mod and that's RO Engines mod. Why have I got two different ones? That's interesting. Two ignitions, not subject to ullage. One ignition, ah, not subject to ullage. Okay, so that's probably the first generation. And then you get your relightable ones here. That's interesting. All right. So we're going to push that. I've got 65 left, which, you know what, if in doubt, put it into lunar rated heat shields. Yeah, actually, that would be perfect. We do need some lunar rated heat shields because I want to go to Venus. So that would give us the option to do Venus landing potentially. We've got some, some little landing bags and things like that. Oh, and a lander can. We could do landing on the... Technically, yeah, that would allow us to do landing on the moon with a lander can, I suppose. We would have docking by then as well. So, okay, that's cool. We potentially are, are, are approaching the land on the moon section of the game, but we'll... Uh, We'll grab on that. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this reasonably calmly. I'm not, I could have I could have rushed the moon a long time ago to be fair and been with it's so biggie. I am considering whether to just go for um oh whether to go for um like a, an Apollo style one or a, a D2 Apollo or anything like that. One of the one of the different sort of things. Um because I've never really done an Apollo mission to the moon. I've done variations of them, I've done, you know, modify this, direct, all sorts of things like that. And the British series I actually did a space station and then go down from the space station, which I really liked, actually. That was a very much, um, I think it's a very civilized approach to landing on the moon, is to put a space station around it first. Um, I think the Apollo one was a bit of a, a you know, well, well done to the Americans. It was a it was a throw. It was a throw and hope. Uh, I know they did a lot of that are prep and put a lot of money into it, but yeah, there's, there was a lot of, you know, if things went wrong. I mean, Apollo 13, perfect example. Um, that 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 could have gone so much so much worse um so let's have a look um i think what i want to do is we're going to run forward to the point where we've got the hydrolox engines then we'll have a look at building maybe a hydrolox upper stage for our current vehicle launch vehicle see what that gives us uh, what sort of efficiency we gain from it um, whether it's going to give us that magic, the magic numbers for Jupiter, which we were looking at about 7,000. We're looking at about 7,000 to, to push us out there for a slow burn. Um, six and a half, six and a half, seven thousand, 7,000 um, with a little bit of space for things. Remember, the, of course, the, the high, liquid hydrogen will boil off. So that's going to be something I have to be aware of. We'll get rid of that. We don't need to see you anymore. Um, and then at the end of the episode, we'll go and see Mars. We may launch, we may launch the Hydrolox. We may not. I don't know. We may do a test flight. We've got 200 days. We have Venus craft, I think, ready. We've got discovery. One of the discoveries done. Another one's about to be done. Then this one will be our next Mars window, which we could actually, let's just check a Mars window while we're here because um, you know what? I didn't actually check a Mars window. I want to send another craft to Mars just to gather a bit more science. Um, 
if anything. Uh, so where we are, that's that one there. Okay, that's really staggeringly low. Why is that? Because that's the that's that one. There we go. Do that. Oh, so that's going to be it. Let's uh, put it to the thing there. That's two two years. It's two years until we're going to go to Mars again. Obviously, we could go straight away. Hmm. That's that's a potential. I didn't realize we had a window right there. But if we don't take this window now, we're going to have to wait for two years. So we will prep one of these for the Mars mission. But equally, we may want to put some orbital craft around Mars at that point. So we'll keep one of our Discovery, Discovery 7, uh, 8 even. Discovery 8 is going to go. We're definitely going to launch it. Um, it can probably go early, it could go early, it could go down here even. It could be a really, really quick transfer, but like there. And then it could just do a flyby. And then potentially we've got orbital craft there. That's a beautiful, that is a really nice thing. Let's actually just plot that again. Now that's earlier. Okay, so let's, um, let's add that to there. So the first window there, that is our orbital. So that's not bad, is it? What's the... What's the capture burn? What is the capture burn on there? Prograde, delta V, normal, get ejection. Ejection, delta V, prograde, not. Where's my capture burn on there? It doesn't say. That's interesting. Oh, there we are. Um, insertion burn. I'm missing it. Insertion burn is 2,600. So maybe 3,000. 2,400 with as an upper stage with our thing. That's a potential one. That's something to really think about. So we've got a little bit of while on that. That's going to be after the Jupiter mission launches. Okay, so that's that's a targetable point. We're going to sit with an extra uh, Discovery anyway. So what I will do is, do we want to launch Discovery to, you know what? Venus Windows is 81 days. It's a choice between Mars and Venus. It is a choice between Mars and Venus because this thing is not going to be ready for, v for for Venus if I if I go for sending one of these to Mars. So you know what? This is going to be this is going to be a Mars mission just to get some more science. This is going to be thingy. And then if we don't actually have a craft ready for the Mars orbit, we can use that. And if if we do, we can always repurpose it. We'll send it somewhere else. We might even look at something like a series or or something like that. We'll, we'll have a look anyway. We've got to build it first, haven't we? Right, let's uh, let's forward time to, uh, I think it's going to be Hydrolox time. So we'll get to the Hydrolox time, I'll warp to there. We'll have a play with the Hydrolox and then um, we'll see what we've got going on. Right, so here we are with the Discovery 9 on top of our standard launch craft, okay? This is our standard launch craft. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to, first of all, I'm going to take this, and we're going to measure its mass because we want to keep that in mind. So it is 4.132 tons. Okay. So next step, we want to take this off and I've already purchased our RL10. So we do the RL to search for RL10. There we go. RL10, wonderful. Plop you on there. Obviously we have no Delta V now. Now these are balloon tanks already, so we can actually, uh, We've got some, some layers on there. Oh, that's interesting. I obviously put that for, oh, that, that was originally designed because we were going to the moon, wasn't it? I was trying to uh, I was trying to get rid of uh, any boil off or anything. Okay, so I need to remove all tanks and then we're gonna put some hydrogen in there. Okay, that's not gonna give us much though. That's one of the things we need to remember. So this is here. Deep space, we could actually switch to a better avionics and we can actually ramp that down to, to 5,000. Apply that, okay. So our total mass now is uh, one point nothing, it's, it's tiny. Right, so um, let's have a look how much capacity we actually have inside this fairing. Do we wanna go wider? Do we wanna go short and fat? That's a good point. First of all, I really hate the bottom of that. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I, I, it's a bit of me that just, I know I shouldn't do this. I know it's really inefficient. I know it's really inefficient, okay? You can scream all you like, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna put that there for now. I know it's really inefficient, what I'm about to do. So just, just let me do it though, just let me do it. I want my top to be about so, I want my bottom to be pretty much zero. I'm gonna do that like that. Uh, we'll do it about 
Uh, no, it should be uh, three, shouldn't it? Do it, do it rounded. There we go. And then we're going to balloon tank it. Put that onto there. We'll reposition the engine in a minute once I've fixed it. Right. So this is going to need to be coloured. So we're going to do custom end, custom end. I'm going to change this because, uh, yeah, I just, I have a thing. I have a thing. What can I say? I have a thing about it. It's got to look nice. And then we've got the edge of that that's just sticking out because it's not quite perfect. Okay. Uh, what is it? Hmm. Oh, we've got to close that. There we go. Right. Pop that in there. There we are. Is there a, there is an actual gap there. That's hilarious. I've seen that happen before. Um, this happens sometimes, I think, when there's a little glitch there, but we will, we'll work on that. Um, and I want two of those. Um, even though I don't need them, because we're actually feeding off this, this craft here for all this stuff, um, which is probably more sensible. But uh, these are these are primaries. Yeah, these are primaries, so they'll, they'll, they'll go first. Right. Um, let's have a look. Delta V, we need about about six. So let's take actually this stuff off. Um, these are surface mounted. They can come off. And these are there. They're going to come off. I do need ullage for it, the these rockets, but that's not a big issue. Right, so let's go a little bit bigger. Uh, can we go to, to two meters? would be a nice size two meter tank yeah that's good that's a nice size i mean it looks horrible right now but we'll we'll fix that so two meter tank that gives me a bit more so then this is going to go to to two meters and it looks even worse now that it's nothing i will save this in a minute and we'll reload it and we can realign everything because that's one of the the glitchinesses that you get right so that's going to be to there and i'm going to increase that to there okay so that gives us five what is my mass now whoa we are getting a lot with this aren't we so um i think we're going to change this whole section at the top even yeah i think i am where's the oh now the decoupler has gone well that's interesting because the decoupler was in here um you know what? we're actually gonna we're gonna put a new a new a new probe core on i'm gonna put a new probe core on and a new decoupler so that's what we're going to do. I know I've purchased that one. I didn't tool it though, so that's okay. So we're going to put that there and we're going to have a decoupler. Where's my decoupler? There you are, the hollow into stage one. Um, we're going to make that, let's see, diameter, bring that down to about there and do that. Make it, make it small, make it small. There we go. Right. Um, and then this is going to sit on there and then this is going to sit underneath it. And then is that aligned? It is not. Right. And then we're going to actually make this, we're going to make this round. We're going to make it a, a smooth cone. But what's this? This is 0 0.6. So we're going to make the top of this 0.6. And we're going to make the bottom 2. We're going to make it a bit shorter and flatter. There we go. Right. I'm going to put it in deep space. We're going to have switch to mature. I want it to be 5 tons. And I want to have, what about, about ooh, say, say 1,000. Say, actually, I don't. I need 500. Give me 500. There we go. Whoa that is you know what we're not going to do that we're just gonna we're gonna make this uh, a sensible size so we'll um all right we're gonna make uh, length increase the length we're gonna make the bottom smaller what we will actually do is i will attempt to we're gonna make that zero we're gonna make that 500 apply that well, see, that's still not good. So we're going to have to change the shape again because we've got this odd shape. So, um, ah, now there's an option. We just make it as like a, a disc over the top. That would be quite cool, actually. Yeah, yeah, I quite like that. And then we set that into it. Yeah, that, that's cool. Um, like a, a thingy, a hollow cylinder, a hollow cone. Oh, yeah, 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 that's good. So I'll make it um, the outer... No, 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 outer is going to be two. The inner is going to be about one. I do it like that actually. Make our own little thing, um, and then fillet. Actually, I don't like the fillet. Let's just keep it like that. That's that's more interesting, isn't it? So we want zero there. We want it to have carrying five tons. We want five hundred 
there and that gives us a little ring and that's wonderful that's like the the sort of centaur ring and then what we will do is because i can we're going to take you off we're going to steal you put you up here pull you down here pull you around this is a very buildy episode i apologize you're going to get to see mars in a minute uh, right there we go okay so that's more we'll, we'll reposition this ring obviously further down and we'll reposition everything when we're finished um service module two would be good do that wonderful okay um i think that's good so that's going to give us uh have we got fill that with stuff what about this one this one needs to be filled with stuff all right what's our total mass now we've got another we've got another ton to go haven't we so let's add a bit more length to this. Uh, what's that going to be? That's five and a half. Let's take it to five. Okay, that is a much more, it's much beefier. It's a much beefier craft actually. Gives us a big chunk of Delta V, which I think is enough to get us to, in fact, I'm pretty sure it is. Where's the, where's the, where's the thing? What's it going to give us? We can actually check this. So Jupiter, six uh that one was ejection that that's the fast one that's the one that gets us there we're going to get rid of that i don't think we can make it i think this one is the one we're aiming for so this one is the six four so we could actually just even reduce this a bit more um even um and go for that the question is i mean that is now right on limit for the avionics i believe let's have a check the avionics are you know what we actually do need to have that as five we can't we can't put anything else but five and that's 500 we can apply that no it doesn't want it let's make it five five point one apply that that's better good wonderful superb right that just protects us in case we've got a problem um electric charge we've got a day's electric charge if i shut down the avionics where's my avionics shut down the avionics it gives us three days okay so we've got three days on orbit because by then the hydrogen wear would have boiled off so that's not a big issue um is there anything else i want to do with this um we could we could downgrade this a bit that might give us that might give us a better thing uh but we do want to communicate i suppose we've got a communication system let's let's do that okay that that should allow us communication i i would have to check um, in fact, there is an easy way to do that. If we go to sub things, do I actually have a sub assembly for the, yes, I do. There you are. If I just plop you underneath here, this is a bit cheaty actually, um, plop that in there. We can actually check what, instead of me going through the whole rigmarole of actually checking where things are, we can actually just go, what have you got set up? You are set up to have, uh, I can't see my. I can't see my transmitter. Can anybody see it? Antenna. There it is. Oh, it's disabled. This has a disabled antenna. Well, that's silly, isn't it? Guess guess we won't be using that one then. Right. Um, interesting. Right. So that's that. Um, I'm concerned that we may not actually get to orbit, but we can fix that with a bit of solids and so forth and, and balance out we have space on there we have a lot of space in fact on the on the craft if we need it um we're going to put a couple of those on that's going to pull us down a bit in fact you know what those are piddly aren't they i would quite like to make them a little bigger there we go and i'd quite like to only have two of them ideally so we're going to do that do that and we're going to have two of them there we go we'll put them down here like so because we'll fix them in a minute all right and then we need two of you pointing wherever you want to point there you go in fact no you know what? we're not using those on this mission we're gonna we're gonna use stockish ones i say stockish ones we're gonna use stock ones uh what have we got i think uh don't need the apollo ones what have we got we've used these ones already we've got these um angled quad angled are these the stock ones i think these are stock i think these are stock ones five where um yeah well, I'll be, well you're huge don't need you what about you 
yeah we like you 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 look all right to me so we'll have four of you please not six but four four would be good there we go wonderful and we're going to set you to uh htp good we we'll just check that these are htp is this htp is there htp in there that's not it that's what i want htp and helium wonderful right so i think that's us done what's our mass we're now over five tons let's check the old uh, avionics avionics says we're okay okay Ooh, use this tab to set the required payload amount for contracts oh that's interesting oh i don't even know what that is i've never actually used that uh, i don't like that I, I hope it doesn't override the sort of things you do anyway um sufficient yep that's good we're okay with that i'm very happy with that so far actually i mean a paint might make it go over but we're fine five tons right i am going to you know we're going to stick this on on here we're going to have to increase the fairing size a bit which i will work on we can deal with the fairing size we can rejiggle all this but let's have a look what's our what's our actual launch going to look like we're going to launch we're going to have 500 thrust uh, 500 Plus that is going to be doing. Oh, this is this is going to be tight still. This is potentially going to be tight. We have actually taken a chunk out of that hit that 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 stage by putting on uh, as much as we have. You know what? We're gonna. I don't like doing this, but we're going to uh, put on. Where is it? Uh, I don't want I don't want ejection force. I don't want any ejection force. In fact because that throws us off completely. Um, RO decouplers, auto decouple false, uh, enable crossfeed, right. So that's enabled, which means we can get rid of these, which doesn't do much for our Delby, but it's, it's enough. We're gonna, we're gonna basically gonna have pipes running down from here to here to fuel this, and then we're gonna do that. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, but you know, whatever. I don't think this can actually capture into orbit around Ju Jupiter, but we're doing a flyby. I, I really, you know what, we can send something with a bit better science in future. Primarily because if I'm going to go to Jupiter and I'm going to orbit, I'm going to want to do some, some flybys of the moons and stuff as well. So I've not got a big issue here with this. This is basically like a, a mini Voyager almost. Right. Um, what's our current mass? If I put more on, I'm going to have to put more bigger avionics on, which means I'm going to have to operate my avionics on this thing. Um, I think that might make it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this. I'm going to have a look at these numbers, compare them to our previous craft, and uh, and then I'll be right back with you. Right, here we have it. We have, uh, or I have, gone through, and I've done some little bit of updating on this craft. So we've we've updated its uh, avionics throughout just to give it a bit more uh, capacity uh, primarily down the bottom here because of what we've done but i'll show you that in a minute up here this is again pretty much our standard our standard shape you've seen it before i've tidied it up a bit if i uh, just put it onto one one of these and you can just see it opened up there you go so um yeah there you go there's our little probe on the top we've we've basically pulled this down this is a hollow a hollow sort of tube that's going to go around the outside that's our avionics and then we've got the the craft in like so we should have everything set up uh rl10 the bottom there i hope it's not going to fail because this is uh, a bit of, a, bit of a, a push this this mission uh this stage is pretty much unchanged apart from operating the avionics just to just to make it a little bit more power efficient and and lighten the load a little bit not much and i don't think it really needed it um first stage i have operated the avionics primarily because i need more capacity so you can see the craft is now 163 tons because we've got extra solids so we've got six solids one two three and then a pair the three on the other side i'm going to go at launch they will fire they will push us up and then they will decouple and as they decouple we will fire uh the next set where are we there we are they will then run and then they will decouple as well and that gives us just enough extra i think push now we could fire all of them at the start but it would have given us a very high uh thrust to weight ratio um so i wasn't too too sort of uh, happy about that it was going to take it over two which is it starts to get a little bit uncontrollable potentially so that's what we've done so there we are you can see build time is very high but if we uh if we do a bit of preview you can see it drops down to 146 days which is perfect for us so we're gonna 
we're going to save that we're going to tool it which is going to cost me 62,000 that's a lot of money but anyway that's now tooled one of the big things is this extra fairing this fairing is now extra long because of that tank in there and because we've played with balloon tanks we've, we've got some more balloon tank size going on so we've got that so there we go that's that done we're going to save that again we're going to launch one and then I'm going to rename it and we're going to launch a, a build a second one. So there we go. And then we can go into our little build list. And uh, those are going to take 100 and, uh, 150 days. We have until our our Jupiter window, pull this up, uh, we've got 200 days. So I've got about a 50 day leeway there. Um, the concern I have is Oh no, we've got both of those built. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna move those up and get them done as quickly as possible. Uh, primarily because that's our next thing. We've got, we've got stuff ready for the Venus window already. We have our craft basically building for that there. So that's nine and 10 are gonna go to Jupiter. Um, we can't really push any further out. What we could do, and, and this is a, a thing we may want to look at, is actually increasing the size of the probe on the top, uh, particularly for say Mars, Jupiter, we could then use this stage for sending some bigger payloads to Mars and Jupiter because it's a very fair, efficient stage. We get we got what almost seven thousand meters per second. I hope that's going to be enough for our Jupiter encounter. We will see. So, with that, I think it's probably best that we go and have a look at Mars and uh, get some science from Mars now. So, join me in about forty days for Mars. Uh, that, in other words, I'm going to jump to it right now. Okay. Welcome aboard Discovery 4. So this is our, our Discovery 4 craft that's on its way to Mars. I think is that Mars, that must be Mars there, or it's something in the it's something in the background. I don't know. I'm assuming it's Mars. Um, although it's on the outside of us. Interesting. Um, it must be Mars. Right. So we're not yet in Mars's sphere of influence. So we're going to do what we've done in the past, which is if we come up here, we can actually check and see. We're going to start running our batteries down because I'm not on time warp. Actually, how long is that going to be? Yeah, let's put us on time warp just to save battery. So this craft did some science around Earth, did some science in interplanetary space. Then we shut it down basically to start saving battery and so forth. So it's done it's done a little bit of science so far. However, um, we have actually turned off its transmitter. It's got some science it still wants to transmit because I think we've actually been running it. Yeah, we've got some stuff going. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to turn all this stuff on. We're going to get everything running. So these, these have been running... Uh, for a while now, just gathering science up for days when it's got power, which is good because it wasn't draining its power doing that. And you can see here we're actually power neutral. So we can do a bit of science gathering there. Now, what we're also going to do is we're going to go into data and we're going we're gonna to stop those transmitting. Remember, we don't want to transmit data from not Mars. We want to send a nice, probably, it's probably a, a, a um, some telemetry data from near Mars would be nice. Uh, our periaps is close. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to be in the atmosphere or not. I can't remember the atmosphere height of Mars. I could go and look it up, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to, we're just going to experience it together. We're going to, we're going to enjoy this experience together. You can see, see, we're now getting a vast amount of science data coming in. Well, we're going to stop that from being transmitted because we don't, when we turn the transmitter on, we don't want that transmitted. That's going to be problematic for us. So, uh, bring up our thing here so we can see the mission the mission is that we're going to go between 20,000 kilometers we're going to be well below that because we're going to be about 130 kilometers up um, we're going to keep an eye on our battery life we are going to be running low so what we may do is we may once we get nearby I may once we get towards sort of low over Mars we may actually shut down some of the experiments because we can get them on the way out so we've got what 15 hours now um, oh, look, we're getting some Earth science through. That's good. That's that's quite nice. That's some of the, some of the science that we've had going on from the, uh, the the test version of this, and from I think uh, Discovery Three, which failed. It's been getting some science back, so we've been getting a little bit of science. We've got a, we've got a day and a half before we actually exit this, so we can actually do quite a lot of science. There can can be a lot of going on. You can see there's a lot of data going through there. We need to get down into that low part of science, that low fly pie, so we can transmit science from nearby and I want to make sure that we've actually got electricity to do that so before we get to zero I'm going to drop it down and we're going to disable some of the experiments we're going to we're going to disable the short term ones uh, we'll do that now so let's have a look what have we got what have we got experiment wise that we're not doing right pressure scan 
we can actually shut those down. That may save us a little bit. What else have we got? We've got you are 13 days, you are all 90, you've got six days. You are not going to complete. None of them are going to complete, but um, let's have a think. Which one do we want to get shut down? You know what? We're going to shut you all down until we get a better chunk of the, the power up. We'll get our power up again. Um, we'll take our time getting our power up. We want that power to be as good as possible when we're coming near by Mars because I do want to transmit when we're in space near. Um, we should really have the biome thing on because it would actually tell me if I'm near near, near Mars and now or not. So we're coming in. So we're going past the orbit of the outer moon, which is, I always get these mixed up. Is, yeah, it's D Deimos and then Phobos. So Deimos on the outside, you see how highly inclined they are? Um, I actually thought that they were different to each other more than that. Okay. Uh, they, they are actually, there's, there's some inclination going on there and uh, some interesting orbits going on with those, if I remember rightly, compared to the plane and, and things like that. Uh, belief that there is probably probably captured asteroids, I think, was this, is the suggestion. Uh, so there we go, we're going to calm that down. We can actually, oh, look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? We could just have a look at that. That is that is Mars, the, the, uh, the, the, the god of war. It's planet, yeah, I don't know why they call it, maybe because it's red, because red for blood. It's, it doesn't really look as red now, though, in, uh, in in a lot of the images. It's sort of been torn down. I think traditionally, was it the the, uh, the Viking probes that sent pictures back that looked exceedingly red, and then they, they actually more recently, or soon after publishing them, realized that they actually had the, the, the filters out and there was a, a degree of error, shall we say, in the whole process. Right, we're going to let this go a bit further. I want to get I want to get right in there and get nice and close before we actually start having a look at stuff. So, right there we go. Let's have a look. We want to we want to see when we're going to get near near science. So this is still this is still not going to be um, distant science. So uh, sorry, near science. So we're going to slow down and there. Ooh, there we go. Right now we're near. So we're now in the near zone. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to do a telemetry analysis. We're going to run that. We're actually going to run all of them, run every single piece of science we've got, because we don't mind about batteries running out now. That should be turning on. Is that turning on? Thank you. Uh, data. Right, and we want everything to be stopped from transmitting apart from our telemetry. Okay, there we go. Get all that, get all that, get all that. And as soon as our telemetry is done, we're going to slow this down. As soon as our telemetry is done, let's have a look. Where's our telemetry data? Um, it is done. Right, so we're going to turn on now our transmitter. It's transmitted. We can disable that again. There we go. Okay. Now we can just activate all this again. We're not going to be transmitting it just yet. We're just going to be gathering it, gathering all the science that we can, all the juicy science. And this is going to hopefully give us quite a lot of science. Now, this is going to spend a lot longer in the Mars sphere of influence. You've got two gigabytes of data already. You can see some of these these values here. Are just going to, they're going to keep adding up. We're not probably going to get as much from this probe as the Mercury one, primarily because the Mercury one also got a lot of interplanetary science. That's a beautiful shot, isn't it? Look at that. That is beautiful. Um, yeah, so how low are we? We're still going down. Now, this will be interesting as to whether we actually hit atmosphere. I think atmosphere is about 120. I don't think it's 140. If it's 140, uh, we could actually lose this entire mission. Uh, we, we have completed the contract because we've we've sent data back. That's why I did it when we did it and why we've, we've done it as quickly as we have. Right, so there we are. We're going to come in, and I don't know. We could actually just do that. It will we'll tell if we do it. Right, yeah, we're not going to hit the atmosphere. Okay, so the atmosphere is below one, one, three, five. That's superb, wonderful. The reason I sped up there was firstly because we don't want to waste electric charge on avionics. Although I can actually shut down the avionics permanently now on this craft. So shut down the avionics. It does have two hundred and eighty meters per second left in it, but burning that at lowest point was not really going to help us it it was going to require avionics on and you know it, it, we're better off actually just transmitting the science right now we may we may want to look at the future but some sort of encounter i mean 
looking at this route there is no way we were going to encounter anything like uh, like phobos or demos because they are just they're just going to take too long to to get around there so there was there was no possible encounters there we're, we're out of the plane anyway so yeah i think this thing is pretty much gone and done right now it is um you can see after this encounter it is actually getting kicked up into a much higher orbit so it's actually it's halfway between uh between mars and vesta now um it will continue to cross mars at this point here but it's uh yeah it's oh no actually no that's not that's the mars orbit what am i looking at i'm being crazy here its orbit is what's happening with this orbit it's just going to be staying on that 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 sort of high elliptical orbit it's going to have a kick out there towards uh, towards vesta and so forth but it's actually coming back down towards earth which is interesting earth perhaps is 151 okay we're actually coming we're not, we're not coming down to earth we're coming down towards the the venus thing i think i looked at this when we were launching them as to whether we could get a secondary encounter with maybe venus so this is interesting we're actually going to end up on this orbit here and we may once we've done this want to start having a look at is there a potential encounter with venus which would be quite nice wouldn't it so let's let's run this forward until we've we've departed this we'll bring up the alarm so we can see we've got another 18 hours our battery life will probably not last that long thinking about it let's have a look oh get it get this get the sun in the view there we go oh look at that that's beautiful isn't it there we go that that's a shot that is a that's a beauty shot you know our little craft flying through the space well not really is it flying is it flying or is it just you know moving through space because you know, flight to me always sort of suggests the requirement of having some sort of aerodynamics involved um so there we go gathering some science some science coming in that'll be from all over the place of course we're not transmitting science from this just yet we will start transmitting when we get into interplanetary space which will hopefully be soon so let's have a look we've got what, eight hours there we can speed up a bit we're about to die for battery so right now we're dead for battery it is a case of the experiments and if we bring them up the experiments will just fight for battery so if we do this you can see we are zero zero battery now that's interesting we've still got connection so we're obviously producing just enough in terms of electricity here for this to not flick out because what you tend to find is it flicks on and off on and off on and off because we don't get connection the power, power dies so there's something different the mercury mission this was flicking on and off on and off on and off as we were going around and this was horrible that's part of the reason why i didn't show you when we were transmitting data uh, because it was it was horrendous um so there we go right we've got uh, so that's waiting that can actually be stopped now can't it those can all be stopped they don't need to be used again um they're not going to provide us with anything unless we go really close to the sun and that's not going to happen i don't think um we we could get a flyby of venus but uh, we will see on that one right we're going to slow down because we're about to do our transition and uh, yeah this, this thing is then going to be interplanetary space and we have to make a decision comments down below should i waste some time waste some time should i try and actually get an encounter with venus it's potential if there is potential there i'd have to look at the plane in more more detail to just to check that to, uh, to see if it's in the same plane as venus it is likely to be because i'm not sure we got much of a kick off anything here but if it isn't um we may not have enough delta v to do anything special with it uh you can see here we're currently on infinity apoapsis because we're actually not yet out of there we go we're out now right just check all of these so that can be turned off 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 which leaves us with these two um this has got two days this has got eight days so these are ones that we've had our other craft doing as well but of course they use a bit of uh they use a bit of battery power so that's going to be a problem we've got two percent battery power now uh, we can actually run these and these are actually going to so these can run and not use up battery power that's interesting so what i will do is we'll we'll run this for a couple of days actually let's run it until we get it up and then i'll show you the impact of transmitting and then we'll end the episode there so we'll get this going for a few days there we go you can see them running down so they're going to get down to zero and da, da, da. so this is going to be what six days we've run this for right so this has been running for six days we turn everything off you can see we've got full battery now this is the reason we turn the transmitter off because if i go over here and we you can see here we've got everything available to transmit we've got two gigs of data that's a lot of data actually isn't it turn that on 
we're now transmitting. Everything's going to be transmitted. Now it will it'll do it quickly. It will actually do it quickly, but you can see it is eating, eating into our, our, our reserves. And I can actually speed this up and you'll be able to tell when the transmission is finished. See all this data being transmitted, all this stuff going on. You see, it's going down. We, we're, we're pumping stuff out. Things like the pressure scan does not take much time at all. Okay. But we're still going down. We're getting all these things coming up. Okay. Good, 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 good. And then we're out of power. That's it. We're out of power now. So what we're doing now is any power we get from these is going straight to the transmitter. It's basically just buffering these things. And if I put this, put this on, oh, let's slow it down a bit. Oh, there we go. If you get the timing right, it'll stay up. But if we go to data, you can see we've still got we still got two gigabytes of data to go. So this thing is going to uh, spend some time transmitting and that's gonna start flashing, which is gonna get really annoying. So from me, as I babysit our probe, as it transmits all its data back to Earth, I'm not actually sure it's facing the right way. Until next time.